Hello YouTube, hope everyone is doing fantastic today. I am very excited to be recording this tutorial. Today we are going to take a look at how I took this photo and then photoshopped it into this photo. So this is a photo that I've been working on for the last couple of days. I would say that I spent, I don't know, somewhere between five and ten hours editing this photo in Photoshop. It took me less than an hour to get my initial photographs, of which I had about 20, um, about five of which were unique, like this. This photo is just rotated into this shoe over here. This is another photo up here, and then we had a third photo from the same shoe that I used uh, for these laces. I replaced the laces on this one because originally they were just falling straight down and it looked pretty boring. In this tutorial, really quick, I'm just going to cover how I took these photos on set, which is really simple, and then we're going to get straight into photoshopping it. And again, we probably won't go, you know, we won't take the full route with it and make this an eight hour tutorial but I will try to touch on all of the main techniques that I used when making this photo because there's really only a handful that are unique to this and that I think you guys would find really helpful. So I'm just going to try and keep it short and sweet and sort of show you a little bit of each process uh, so that you know what I'm doing. A main thing we're going to be working on is uh, using like the clone stamp tool for touch up, but it's going to be set up a little bit differently than most of your typical clone stamp tool tutorials. It's going to be much more procedural and um, not destructive at all to the original photo. So it's a really nice system that I just sort of have been uh, nailing down for this uh, photo and my last photo shoot in particular. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I know I ramble, guys. I know I ramble. I'm going to get better at it. <laughs> so first off, let's just look at my original photo. So original photo. This is pretty easy. Just shot in my living room. I have two pieces of white foam board. You could also use poster board, which act as my background. Since we're cutting it out, in Photoshop anyway, it's only important that it covers the shoe, you know? It doesn't have to cover down here, it doesn't have to cover here. We just need to cover the shoe uh, so we can get a nice, clean, uh, quick mask uh, out of the shoe. Also, let's see what else. This is just a simple tripod that my roommate had and I used the arm of the tripod to hold the shoe up so it looks like it's suspended in midair. And then I spent a considerable amount of time photoshopping this out and fixing the laces here. So it does take some time, but with this method I was able to get a really nice curve on the laces which I used in my final photo. Another option would have been to use fishing string uh, around the back loop of the shoe and just hold, tie it up to something and hold it up like that. And that probably would have saved me a little bit of time. <clears throat> One sec. Okay. Um, what else? So my lighting setup was very simple. I just used a few old lights, but I had a light over here with a small, like $20, you know, Amazon diffuser uh, disc in front of it. And then I had a light over here with a diffuser in front of it. And then I also had a light that was pushed a little bit further back, like over here somewhere. And it was sort of a hair light just for the edges. So what I did for this is I took this photo and then I swapped out my white foam board and I put black foam board on top of it. So this photo is the photo that we will actually be working on because I knew I was going to Photoshop it into a really dark background like this anyways, and it makes it a little bit easier to blend. But I used this photo to get a very quick mask and then apply it to this photo to delete the background. And then we save all of the details from this photo 
to actually work with and you know be the building blocks for a photo so i'll show you how that works it's really simple so what i am going to do is i'm going to just drag this photo on top of this one and line it up make sure that it's perfect uh, of course when you're taking the photos it's important to not bump your um, product that you're shooting otherwise this won't work now on my original photo all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make it very contrasty and then I'm going to select the white parts so I can go into my curves and I can pump up the curves like crazy and then I can just darken everything else way down Let's see how this is looking. Okay, so we're getting there. I might even go in the dodge tool, set it to highlights, and just sort of get rid of this background here. Just make it super bright so we get a super clean um, selection. I didn't do this originally, but this is one option. Now on my layer with my white foam board, all I'm going to do is go up to select and then go to color range. And now I can either sample a color like this. I can just click and sample white or I can go to my drop down menu up here and click it and then click on highlights and it will select the highlights and then I can play with these tools. But I, for this photo, I actually like to be able to just sample my color and then play with the fuzziness until it looks right. That looks pretty good. We can look at it on a quick mask. I might even hit this little add button here and then add some more colors and click around this white area to make sure that it's selecting this range of colors. And that makes it quite a bit easier. Okay, let's go back to selection preview. I'm gonna change it back to something like grayscale. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll click okay. And now we have this selection. Now I can go up to my top layer and then I can select my top layer, right? Just by clicking on it in the layers panel. And then I go down here to the mask button and I click it. And I'll actually need to double click it and hit invert. And now we have our shoe already masked out. Now, there's some ways that we can soften it up a bit. So we could go in here and uh, turn up feather to maybe like 0.7 pixels or like one pixel for this photo. And I can shift my edge. If I need to, I could shift my edge in or out or something. We'll do like uh, 0.6 pixels feather on this, just to soften it just a little bit. So I'll zoom in so you can see what I did there. I just softened up the edge. This is 158% zoom, but you can still tell at 100%. It's definitely helping. Now, uh, this is pretty simple. So now I would just go in and uh, select around my product and then I'll hit control I to invert, sorry, control shift I to invert my selection. Uh, and then with my layer itself selected or my mask selected, I can just go in and paint with black or fill it with black, control delete when black is my swatch in the back over here. And now I can paint with a black brush, soft brush right here. Get rid of anything that we don't want very simple to do. So let's make a new layer, call it background, fill it with black so we can see what we're working with. So this is already looking quite clean. That's the reason that I shot this on white. It would be really difficult to get that clean of a selection on this. And we could even try, you know, select color range and then click 
sampled colors, but like, look how we can't get a clean selection. We simply can't get a clean selection on this photo because we're trying to select the background, which is so similar to the product. Much easier to shoot it like this on white and then, you know, come in here and select it. And uh, we don't really even have to do much pen tool work until we really start refining it, which we will use the pen tool later to fix some things up for sure. Let's see here. Yeah, because the reason we put this on a mask is we can always go back in with the brush tool or the pen tool and paint. And, uh, you know, we haven't done anything destructive yet, which is really nice. All the data is still in here. A few things we can do here. Let's see. So we've got to talk about, I fixed the color grading. I added some color correction and some color grading. And uh, I added some smoke, which was from the Action Essentials pack from Video Copilot. Um, but you could get smoke from like a free, you know, photography website like Pexels or Pixabay, or you could license some stock images or get some smoke brushes. So that's really easy. You just layer it in behind your text and behind your, your product and it'll look nice. There's a lot going on in this photo. So if we take a moment to look at what I did in this photo, basically what we have going on here is if I take away my atmosphere, we have our background which was sort of uh, the black poster board, clone stamped, and then I used some curves to adjust it, and then I hit it with a huge field blur, or Gaussian blur, just to soften it way up, so it's almost like a gradient or a solid color. And then we added some smoke, right? We added some smoke from um, Action Essentials, too. Uh, and then we have some more atmosphere that I added behind our text. We have our text here in front of the atmosphere. Atmosphere under the shoe, or dust under the shoe. So we give it a little bit of separation and we allow the viewer to see the shoe because if it's like this, your eye is going to be hunting for a while and it's not as comfortable of a way physically for you to look at a photo. But if we have this smoke added beneath the shoe, then it's a lot easier for us to see the details uh, of the shoe. So it's easier for us to edit it, and it also is more pleasing to look at as a finalized photo. Then we have our main shoe organized into a big old folder. Everything is color uh, sorted by color, so I know what I'm working with. So basically what I did is I went in, I took some, here I'll show you. I'll just show you. I have other photos, such as these photos, which I used for the laces. So, for example, I used this lace. Earlier today, I went in with the pen tool, and I cut out this lace. And it probably took me 5 or 10 minutes, and I got a perfectly clean uh, selection of it. And then I came in here, and... I just threw it in right here. So that's what this lace is. This lace is the same lace, but I believe I flipped it horizontally and I rotated it a bit. So it looks like a different lace, but I only had to select it once. And then we have some dodging and burning uh, to make it look a little bit different as well. All non-destructive, by the way. Um, as far as this shoe goes, Basically, I had to add some of those laces from my other photos uh, to fill in the gaps here because remember we had a big um, arm of the tripod running right through here. So we had to Photoshop, we had to clean that all out with the clone stamp tool and the mask tool and just deleting it. Basically, let's see, here's my shoe. Here's my shoe cleaned up, by the way. You can tell I did a lot. I did some global dodging and burning to make it look like there's more light here, 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 etc. Uh, I darkened down the bottom of the shoe to give a more desirable look. And we did a lot of clone stamping, guys. I'm going to go over my clone stamp technique um, 
in this video because I developed a couple of new ways to use the clone stamp tool, which is a lot faster, non-destructive, and uh, really procedural and really targeted. So you can clone stamp and only target, for example, the lights or the darks and get a much more selective um, usage of the clone stamp tool. It's a, it's really nice the way that I have it set up. Um, here we've got, we've got our individual clone stamp layers. So here's my main clone stamp layer, uh, which is just a normal layer that I use the clone stamp on. And then here I've got a layer. This layer is set to darken. So when I go in with the clone stamp tool, it's only going to clone stamp areas that are darker than the original photo. So it makes it very easy for me to clean up this edge right here with the clone stamp tool. And it's very fast. So I will show you that soon. We've got our burn layer, which is just a curves layer set to only affect this. And then we painted lightly on the areas we want to burn. Same with the dodge, the macro dodge layer. So we're brightening up the top as we see fit, whatever looks good. We've got our bottom lace fix. We've got another lace fix for up here. Uh, let's see. Got some more bottom lace texture taken from other photos or this photo like could have been taken from here and clone stamped, etc. Extra laces, didn't end up using those. Always gotta have extra laces, guys. We've got our top laces, which was from this photo. We've got our top shoe, complete with some original background from the foam board that I decided looked good. And then we threw in some atmosphere behind it to give it some separation again from the background, make it look a bit nicer. Got our background, which was like clone stamped foam board. Some more smoke. Uh, this smoke is in front of these laces, which gives some three dimensionality to it. We've got our shoe original, and then we've got our new. So again, lots of dodging and burning, lots of clone stamping. Had to even out the suede, a lot of work. A lot of work that was. We've got our clone stamp. We've got our lighten clone stamp. We've got our burn, macro burn layer. We've got a second macro burn layer for the sole and some of this area, and actually. I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit because I think that's getting a little bit too dark. Okay, we've got our dodge layer, which we didn't do much with that, but it is what it is. Then we've got our top atmosphere, which goes on top of everything else we've covered so far just to fill it in, make it look more interesting. Got our color layer, or our colors, which are from levels and color balance. So this is mostly color balance, and then levels just to make it a bit more pleasing. And I lifted up the blacks a little bit, but that's a personal choice. Originally it was quite red, and then we made it significantly more blue. And then here is a crazy curves layer adjustment uh, for when you're editing and you need to see the details, you know, you need to figure out what's wrong. Like this line is too harsh here. I turn on a crazy temporary curves layer. Then I'll go in here to my, uh, my clone stamp. I'll just clone stamp away. And I might notice things that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Now, as you can see, we fixed that area right there. Pretty nice. Pretty nice if I do say so myself. So that is uh, the general summary of how this photo was accomplished. I'd like to go over a couple more things with you as well, though. So running back into this photo that we are working on, I'll go ahead and organize this 
drag this into a new folder and we'll call it main shoe. Drag our background into a folder and we'll call it BG for background. Now on our main shoe layer, if we select the mask over here, we can go in with the brush tool, set to black, and we can start painting away areas that we don't want to appear. If we want to do this in a safer way, we can hit the pen tool and we can create a mask. And this is what I did for basically everything in this photo, I would create a mask. And this is the most uh, controllable type of selection you can make that I've seen so far. Just go in, hit feather one pixels, and then we'll go in and we'll paint. First we'll paint with white, and we'll make sure that we retrieve all of this detail we accidentally deleted earlier. And then we'll hit Control shift i to invert our selection. And then we'll paint with black on the mask, and not on the layer, on the mask. And that will allow us to delete the areas that we do not want. Now, I think it would be easier to go in and replace these laces with like, I don't know, just laces from another photo starting at about right here. So go in here and delete all of this that we don't want. Again, the pen tool is amazing will save your life if you know how to use it right. So I'll go in here, my selection, hit OK, and I will hit Control Delete to fill it with black. And now we've got that part sorted out. So that was pretty quick, really quick. We went from this to this in a short amount of time. So I would replace these laces with something like from my other photos. I would cut it out, cut out the lace with the pen tool in my other photo, line it up here, use the clone stamp tool and masks to sort of feather it. Like I would paint with black to feather this one to sort of blend it. So it's, you know, it's not a sharp edge, it's faded. And then you would do the opposite with the other lace. So you would fade it into this lint, this um, lace and make sure that they're colored the same so they blend nicely. So that's a pretty simple concept, uh, but it just takes a lot of time. Just go in with the pen tool and mask out a lace and plop it right there and another one right there. Um, otherwise, you can do what I did and you can go in here, completely paint out that pole and then go in and add laces, just little sections of laces and blend those in, uh, which you might copy from here or you might copy from another photo. So let's talk about clone stamping. And I'm gonna add, gonna add a new folder and call it color correction. And then I'm gonna add my temporary curves adjustment just so we can see what's going on a bit better. And also the red channel is way too high. Okay. So let's go in here as well. Bring our saturation way down. So if I want to add, if I want to clone stamp out these dirty areas of the shoe, what can I do? Well, there's many options. I can hit S and bring up the clone stamp tool and I can go in here on my layer itself and I can start clone stamping away. But let's say that I get way down the road and I find that I made a mistake and I accidentally clone stamped this area. What am I to do? Well, in this case, I would just have to back up in my history panel all the way up. But let's say I've been working for 30 minutes uh, I might not be able to do that. 
where I might have to destroy some progress that I made down here with my clone stamp tool or all around the shoe. So a better way to do this is to create a new layer right above your shoe. We'll call this clone stamp and we'll call this clone stamp darken. Set the layer to darken. And then what we can do is we can clone stamp on this layer if the clone stamp tool is set to sample current and below layers. And we will still get just as good as an effect as we would earlier. But right now, I'm just working on the clone stamp uh, areas that I need to darken. So this won't work on areas that I need to lighten. But this gives us an incredible amount of control. The reason for that is I can go over here and sample this color and paint here, and it's only going to darken the area that's brighter um, than the color that I sampled, right? So it allows us to make very careful adjustments with the clone stamp tool that we otherwise couldn't make. Not only that, but I can add a mask by clicking the mask button down here to my clone stamp layer. And if I decide I made a, a mistake earlier, I can go in and I can paint black onto this mask and, and completely undo my progress at any time I want. So it's 100% non-destructive. I can even turn the layer off. If I decide I made a mistake twice, I can go back in and paint with white on my mask and I'll redo all of that clone stamp progress that I made earlier. So this is a really, really good system for using the clone stamp tool. You can use this with other tools as well. Uh, so another thing I will do is I'll make a new layer and I'll call it clone stamp lighten. And you guessed it, we're going to set this layer to lighten. In this situation, we're only going to, it's only going to let us clone stamp areas that are darker than the area that we selected. So I can fill in this dark area with some lighter mesh from over here. I could also set my brush opacity to 50% or whatever percent I want, and that will give me uh, a more gradual effect. So I can go in here with my clone stamp lighten and sample here, and I can paint, and I can use that to add texture. So I'll only be adding texture from this suede onto the areas that are too dark to see. Now what if I want to fix all of these little specks in the suede? Well that's easy. I go to my darken layer and then I use my clone stamp tool as usual. I sample as close as I can uh, to the area that I'm painting and I just paint and I might need to put this layer on top of my other layer. So it's best to do them one at a time. It's best to do, for example, darken first, and then go back in later, and do your lighten layer, if your lighter, lighten layer is going to go on top. I can go in here, and I can fix that area. Oops, I was painting on the mask. I can clone stamp out those specs that I copied on my lighten layer. Now for an area like this, go to my darken layer, clone stamp, sample here, and then paint here. See how quick that is? It's really quick. So let's fix let's fix this problem right here this fraying. This area is too light, so I'm going to go to my darken layer. On the layer itself, I'm going to paint the clone stamp tool. Alt click here to sample. Go down here, start painting. Alt click to sample, go up here, and paint. Sample, paint, 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 paint. It's so fast, guys. Such a quick 
non-destructive way to fix your photo. Now I'm doing a pretty rough job of this right here, but that took all of like three seconds and we basically just fixed this area. It's so fast. Do the same thing right here. I can go to my lighten layer. I can fix that. Go to my darken layer and finish it out. I can go to my darken layer and fix that spot, that spot, that spot, that spot. All of that. This weirdness that's going on. So robust. I can fix this. Get my lighten layer. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Paint right there, paint right there. Go back to my darken layer. Paint, paint. Uh, sample here. Paint. Look how quick this is, guys. This is insane. Oh, messed up a little there. Sample here. Paint. Guys, this is real time. So fast. Still on my darken layer, fixing all of these areas. Let's fix this. Just gonna go down here, start painting. Now one thing I did when I was fixing this earlier is I got my pen tool out and I actually made a selection with my pen tool of this specific area that I wanted to clone stamp because it's delicate and I wanted to get it basically perfect or perfect enough for what I was using the photo for. And uh, just go through here and get a nice little selection on that area. Close the selection, go up here to selection Feather radius, one pixels is fine, hit OK. And then actually I'll go to select a mask and feather it just a little bit, hit OK. And now I can clone stamp without really worrying about anything else. So with my darken layer, just clone stamp this. It's so easy to do this. It really makes it uh really makes it easier. So if we back up, let's see the before and after of what we just did. Guys, that's crazy. So fast. And no, it's not perfect, but we've spent a super small amount of time on it. So granted, if you're shooting a product that's brand new, which these shoes are not brand new, brand new, I wear these shoes like every other day. If you're shooting a brand new product, then it's going to be, you're going to have a little bit less clone stamp work. But even with shoes like this, I couldn't get the suede to fall perfectly. So we still have a lot of clone stamp work that we have to do. Like on the suede here, I would go to my darken layer, for example, and uh, just start painting away. Whoops. Just start painting away with my brush, maybe at 35% opacity or even less sometimes, and even out all of this suede. Get rid of those like highlights and stuff. And this takes time. You could also go to your lighten layer and do the same thing, but I, I use my darken layer for all of this. So it takes time, but you can go through and you can sort of make all the suede look uniform-ish with this method as well, and it's really fast. You can go in with our darken layer here, and just paint. And for example, let's, let's go over a scenario. Let's say you wanna fix this. 
I'm not going to sample color over here and use it to paint there because it's going to be way too dark. See? A better idea is to go as close to your subject as you can. Go to the brightest part that you can when you're on your darkened layer. Sample a bright area and then paint. And now you're making sure that you're not darkening it too much. So here's our before and our after. And we can go back in and we could sample like right here, for example, and paint. And it's going to look good. It's going to look much less drastic. So now our before and our after, you don't even know that it was there, especially when you zoom out of what you'll actually be viewing the photo at. You can do the same thing over here. Sample right here, or you can sample right here in a light area. Just go through and paint our darken layer. Usually I just sample right beside whatever I'm painting, and that's usually good enough. I'm painting on my light and layer now to even things out a little bit further because my light and layer is on top of my darken layer. So it can see my clone stamp tool, since it's set to all layers, our current layer and below, it can see that darken layer and it's working based off of my darken layer as well. So we turn this on and off. I just smoothed out this area a ton in like 15 seconds. Uh, it's not perfect, but again, it's like 15 seconds. So you can get as detailed as you want with this and you can make everything perfect. Basically with the smoke layers, I just dragged in some smoke or you could use a brush tool for the smoke and then you just you just transform it and move it around and just sort of see what looks good. There's no real art to it, or no real science to it. It's more of an art. You just sort of wing it. Let's say that we want this lace to be behind uh, the A in our text. What I will do is I will find my lace layer, which is that layer. I'm actually going to make a copy of it, and then I'm going to select my text control click on it to select it and then I will go back to my lace layer which is this and then I'm going to paint with, uh, with black on this selection here and now it's gonna look like that lace went behind uh, my text. It gives it a really nice 3D look. And I think that it should go behind this one too. So I'm also going to paint with white over the mask. See our before and after for that. Went from that to that. So that's looking pretty fun. One thing that you'll need to know is how to do these big uh, dodge and burn layers. Let's see if we can find one. Okay. These layers. Let me just make another one. All you do to make this is you go above your, uh, your shoe or whatever. You click your adjustments panel, you add a new curves adjustment, and then you make sure that this button is clicked and that will make it only apply to the layer beneath it. And now you adjust the shoe. Let's move up here. So the way that you would create one of these dodger burn layers is you would go up to your adjustments panel, click on curves, it'll add a new curves layer. Click this button to apply it to just the uh, shoe layer or product layer below it. 
then you adjust it a little bit. Let's say we're making a burn layer. So we'll make everything dark. Then we'll go in here to the mask and we'll hit invert, click OK. Now it's not affecting anything. And then we'll go in and we'll paint white on the mask to reveal uh, the layer where we want to. So I'm going to paint with like 20% opacity. And let's say that I want to brighten up this area. Oops, oh, this is a burn layer. Okay, so I forgot. I'm going to set my layer to my curves up so they actually dodge. And then I'm going to paint with the white on my curves layer. And wherever I paint, it's going to brighten up like that. So if I want to add some lighting and make it look like I don't know, the Vans logo is actually lighting up my shoe. I can go along and paint along these areas, along the edges here. Add a bit of lighting. So now if I turn my layer on and off, that's how you create a dodge layer. And for burn layer, you just go in here and you make the curves, you know, just a little bit, pull them down, make them a little dark. And now we just made a dodge or a burn layer, which actually looks pretty cool. Kind of like that. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite easy to make those. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was mainly about um, methods about how to go about doing things and you know, using uh, using the clone stamp tool in a more effective way, and then also how to select how to photograph a subject so you can select it a little bit easier in um, in Photoshop. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. Let me know if you have any questions. I didn't want to make this into like an eight-hour tutorial, so I hope that I conveyed the basics of how to do everything in this photo. But again, if you have questions. Let me know. I'll either jump in the comments and answer them directly to you, or I will create a separate video to answer your questions along with, you know, whatever next tutorial I make. I'll just throw your question in there. So let me know if you guys have questions about how to accomplish anything, uh, whether it's on set while you're taking photos or if it has to do with Photoshop itself. I have a bit of experience when it comes to both of these things, and I am here to help you guys. So I learned um, I learned most of what I know about photography from YouTube, so I'm trying to give back, and I'm not really uh, holding back any secrets to my own process. So I would advise you guys, take advantage of this. Uh, I'm really here to help, and while I don't have that many subscribers right now, it really gives me a unique opportunity to answer your questions uh, in a really full manner. So thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you don't mind, please go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to reach out to me uh, through Instagram, you're more than welcome to do so. My Instagram is Josh in the studio and my uh, automotive Instagram is Joshua Bates Photography. My website is www.joshuabatesphotography.com. So thank you guys for watching again. And we will see you in the next video. Peace.